What you cooking? Guys, welcome to the next generation baller show. I'm your host, GP. Got something special for you guys. Told you guys we're gonna get the interviews in. We already got one now, we've got them all rolling in. So it's good to have Amanda on the show today. Amanda Jr., um, young baller. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna let him explain his story and then we'll just go dove in and we'll, we'll see how his journey is and we'll see what he, we'll see what he's got to say. Good man, I'm all good. Thanks yeah, for man. having me and whatnot. It's a pleasure, Appreciate man. It. Really good. I know we've been trying to get things sorted, games, training, all of yeah, that. Yeah, so, yeah. Glad that you, you managed to make it. You managed to come down. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll start. We'll start off. Um, so, first simple question. So, I want you to explain your journey from basic. Tell us your name. How old you are? Where you from? And let's talk about your journey from grassroots level where to are now. And then we'll just dove. We'll dove into that and 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 go from there, really. Alright, so, right, cool. So, as you know, my name is Junior Armando Turner. I am from Guinea-Bissau. I was born in Guinea. Came to England when I was about eight, eight years old. And yeah, that's where my football journey sort of started. Like, obviously, I came, I joined a finesse team. It was like a, you know, like them soccer, like, you know, them like football foundation things where you just join, try your luck. You play. Yeah, yeah. What was that? Yeah, specific, that was, what specific club was that? It was. Um, so what's that specific cup or no, what's the club? Club. Do you know the name of the club? The club was called Finesse Academy. Oh, Finesse. Yeah, I know Finesse. Yeah, I know Finesse. This yeah, what it, yes. So what you're basically saying? Because I, I also I'm a coach and I manage myself and I do similar things. That Finesse is basically a grassroots club with an extra bit of incentive where we train the boys and to get to academy level. Some of the boys at the level, some of the boys are at least and whatnot. Where you get more opportunities rather than just your average Sunday league. You will go around play against academy scouts. Will come. So it's just a yeah. higher level, higher level stage of grassroots football. So I, I I'm indulging that myself. So. I, I know you took I don't know if they very well. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I was at Finesse for about <laughs> sorry. Yeah, sorry. So, yeah, I was at Finesse from like what? The age of it was the age of eleven. Yeah. Age of eleven. I was playing there. Never been signed before. Okay. Played, went on trial, a few clubs. I remember when I first went to, I think it was um South End United. Mm -hmm. I went into Southfield United for like two months. But back then I was small. I was a small boy. And obviously, because I've never been at Academy before, there's that like the level of game understanding mm -hmm. with the other boys. You could sort of see it. I was a bit raw, just like what playing. Position, what position did you play? I, I know you're, you're left footed back. Yeah, yeah, I'm a midfielder. Oh, you're midfielder. So you, you would you say you're predominantly left fielder or do you get tried on the left, right? I think Maybe I think that, six of you playing on the left hand side when you was at Charlton. Is that, is that... Yeah, at Charlton. Charlton is a different story, but we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get to that. I tell you, guys. Yeah. When I when I was I was at um, South End, it was all well and nice, but then again, there was the like the game understanding side of it. I remember when uh, they actually offered me 
Yeah. They offered me when I played against Brighton. I must have played against Brighton. I scored two goals. Okay. And then I got an assist. We won 4-3. Okay. 4 free, something like that. I remember after the game, I was speaking to the head of recruitment guy and he was telling me that like, you've done well, what not. He said he's going to offer me. And I remember coming in the next day to do recovery and stuff. And then I was supposed to have my meeting afterwards and sign the papers. Mm. Going into the meeting, I got told I can't play no more. And I was like, but why is that? So I was confused. And then I found out that because I'm from Guinea-Bissau, yeah, and back then I didn't have no British passport. I came here by visa because of my dad. Mm -hmm. And obviously my dad at the time must have gone back to Guinea. And the only way I could play is if he was still in the country, sort of providing. Yeah. That's interesting. So that happened. Yeah, that happened. I must have left Southend after that. That like was all political. That must, then very, I went back. that must have been very devastating. How how did you process yeah. that? Back then, like, I was a kid. That I, I was. I was upset. How old were you at the time? I was about what? I think I was about like twelve. Okay. So at that moment, after you had that experience with Southend, I know that must have been quite devastating. How did you? What was you, what? What was your thoughts then? Like, how did how how did how did when you it happened? Record? When it happened, it was a weird one. Like, I did, I didn't even know how to take it. Like mm. I said that. Uh, Obviously, I've never been signed before. The only thing I wanted to do was be signed. Okay. Yeah. And I had the opportunity, but something happened there I couldn't control. So it was one of them. Ones. It was devastating, but after a while, I got over it because obviously I went back to playing with them, finesse mm. and whatnot. And then I got to like, it got to a period where I was playing football. I think it was like three years, but I wasn't getting anything. I was just playing. Mm. And then I was 15 at the time. 15, I think I went I went back to the academy football. So I went back to MK Dons. Okay, yeah, MK. Okay. Yeah, I went, I went MK Dons. I think it was only I went MK Dons for literally two days. I remember I went the first day they told me to come in, it was a match day. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I went in. I remember we were playing some team abroad and I scored two on my on my first game. So I scored two. But the reason, the reason why they didn't sign me is because I didn't celebrate. No way. Yeah. Is that what you were told? That's what I was told, but I think it's more than that. I've, it's got to be more than that. There's no way a club could say, yeah, we're not signing you because you didn't celebrate your goals. Yeah, I think that you, you, we'll get more into that. The, I want to hear a bit more about your academy experiences, but they are the, one of the type of stories and type of explanations that I feel are a bit, yeah, a bit weird. And being in the system, yeah. you've been in the system, I know it's just, it is a crazy world considering that um, players go into a system, some players are new, some players don't understand, it's a, it's a whole new experience for them. And, okay, I know every player might want to be somewhere, but I think everyone's human enough to understand that the opportunity might not come. But I think the best, the most horrific thing I would say is the fact that when you want to be somewhere so much and then you're told you can't be there and then you have no actual tangible explanation, because... I guess if it's from you, is that if you were at a club and they said, okay, we don't want you because maybe you need to work on your left foot, your right foot, or you need to touch, or your crossing it is good, or you don't, you're not really good off the ball, then I guess as a player, that gives you the opportunity you need to go back, work on it, and then something yeah. to move on to. So I can completely understand, especially as a young kid, going to such a big environment, that being told, these excuses as in like you're not, not celebrating and you're because you're, you wasn't born here it's kind of things that are out of your control in terms yeah. of sense so it's hard for you maybe to process that and maybe add that to what you feel like you need to develop to go on and push on so yeah it's very interesting we'll go more into, into that so after you after MK Dunn's yeah so yeah like that was the excuse that I was mm. didn't celebrate and then I remember um my agent at the time, which he wasn't my agent, but he was like the guy that's looking after me. Mm -hmm. So I remember he told me, he told me, look, like you played well. I don't, I don't see why the the reason is that, but mm -hmm. keep your head high and whatnot. So mm -hmm. I, after that, I didn't go back to MK Dons. Mm -hmm. I went back home. Like at this point, I'm like, like what else do I need to do? Because I'm going to these places and it's not like I'm going there and I'm not doing well. Mm. I'm going there affecting games. 
Because mm. that's one thing I've said, like, the mindset I've got is whatever game you play in, try do something that people remember. Mm. Even if it's, I don't know, a wonderful pass. At least someone can turn around and say, yeah, he's the kid that's done that mm. or done this. You just need to be remembered. And um, I walked away from MK Dons knowing that it's not me. Mm. Like, it's not my, my footballing ability that didn't get me there. It's just... I don't know what it is, but it's, it can't be there. And then, then I went back to finesse again, training. I was about, I was still 15, turning um, 16. Mm. I went into Cambridge. Mm. So I went into Cambridge. It's crazy. Like this, I don't know how these things work, but I went into Cambridge. I remember we were playing, we were playing like, um, you probably even know the team. It's called, um, what's the, you know, Reese James, do you know his dad? Um, now James Academy. Now James Academy. So, yeah, yeah it was, um, it was a, it's like a, you know how I was saying Finesse like, plays the academy football? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I was I was involved in the fixtures, but I wasn't playing for now, now James Academy. I was playing for Cambridge. Yeah. And they said they were obviously going to look at me at that game and they make a decision. Yeah. I remember I played that game, I scored a hat trick and got two assists. Oh, so after the after the game, I don't know what happened. I think a bit of altercation going like went on. The agent that I was talking about, I heard that like, a few years later, went in there and said, So how much are we getting for junior? Something like that. Yeah. I was like, I thought someone told me that that put off the club. But I don't believe that because Back then, I was I was still young. I was like fifteen, um, and I think considering based on what you're saying and being in the environment and um, hearing all these sorts of stories, I could say I would say that that possibly could be a very very good tangible reason because what I know, especially from a lot of academy systems, and we delve into the age and to talk about that a little bit more, is I know through experience that a lot of clubs don't um, like like the word like agents. They don't like them at all, and what the, the the biggest thing that they hate is that when they have them at a young age. So I think from Cambridge's point of view, I think maybe they saw your agent much more of a headache than you. And the fact that he was already asking for money is I feel like maybe they thought that if they if he's gonna be a problem now and he's only 15, what's gonna happen when he's 18, 19? So definitely I, I, I do I would I know from Academy that agents are very do become a major sticking point when it comes to clubs wanting to sign players because like agents are frowned upon by certain clubs and maybe and how it is certain clubs have agents for their own specific club so they would rather you work with their agents and sell outside information but um yeah that for me I, I could I would say that that is one of the most common common excuses and common sticking points that do happen to players is that they're agents because agents don't really have a good a good name. So um, I do understand that story. So after Cambridge, um, what happened then? After Cambridge, that's right, so that happened. There's, they then said, no, like, he, but man, the match, but they we're not signing junior and whatnot. So I was like, wow. At this point, yeah, I was thinking... You know, like, it's so demotivating, yeah, when you go to uh, clubs yeah, and then you're getting told, yeah, you're good, but we're not going to sign you. Yeah. It's okay. like, it's like you, you're just saying I'm good to, like, sweeten me up a little bit, but I'm not good enough to play at that club sort of thing. Yeah. So, uh, to, I, 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 and, and I know, and that's one, because um, one thing that I would have been doing, especially during the lockdowns, and speaking to certain people, um, I don't know if you heard of Clubhouse, but I was involved in Clubhouse with a lot of chats with um, a lot of people in the industry. And one of the main sticking points what kept cropping up was the fact that um, it's the way that clubs treat players upon release and not signing players. And yeah. um, you just from someone that's been experienced and been in the field, just for me to you, um, the decision that a club makes, you shouldn't determine your career it's like you, I, what I'm seeing especially in this interview I can sell and by looking at your career you're someone that's got a distilled mindset someone that that knows what they want you just have to push and being in the situation the, the environment that you are in considering you're trying to become a professional and play at the highest level 
these are the type of battles that you're going to occur along the way. So it's good to see that you've restored that mentality. You've made certain decisions in your career that maybe certain players wouldn't make. And I would say continue doing what you're doing. Sometimes the academy route ain't the right, the right time for people. And you have to make certain decisions for, for your career. But from what I've seen of you, the little clips and your mindset, you're definitely along your way. So that's just a little thing I just want to say to you as you continue before. Because I know it can be quite demoralising going back on the past and all these experiences. Yeah. You've had. yeah. And um, yeah, um, it's, I'm, I'm happy yeah. that, I'm happy that you, you're, you're speaking about it with us. But at the same time, I do want to give my side and just to let you know that what you're doing is great. And you are an inspiration to a lot of boys because you are keep going every time your head's been knocked down. You keep pushing on. So keep going. Keep going. Man. Thank you, man. Thank you. And I appreciate that, bro. I appreciate it. But yeah, so after that, I remember that like, I, I spoke to my mum. I was like, like, what am I doing wrong? And then like, that all these clubs were going to, it's just not working. Mm. And I started like, questioning my size. I was thinking that like, obviously, because again, like, I was a bit, as you can see, my physique, like, I'm a bit lean and small. Mm -hmm. I, I was smaller back then. So I was questioning my size, thinking that, uh, am I ready to play at this level? And then, I remember um, my uh, my agent calls me one day and tells me that he's going to, I was like, what, at 16? Like, leaving school now, going into, obviously, college and whatnot. So I remember I must, uh, he called me, he said he's going into home church. Yeah, so I thought, okay, cool. I'll go into home church, but they do, like, the college program thing. Yeah. So I was there. I was there for like a year and a half, playing, uh, doing studying as well. And I started taking studying more seriously. Like I was studying a lot more serious than I was playing football. And then I found myself not playing football quite a lot. On a, and obviously the level I was playing at, it's not it's not great mm. sort of thing. Mm. And then... Um, interest you as much. Yeah, so I was... Uh, like I was playing, but again, it's almost like I'm playing, but I'm not, I'm not giving them at all because because of the level. I feel like I should be playing somewhere else. Mm. But I was there, and then FA Youth Cup happened. So FA Youth Cup happened, and we had a good run to be fair because then the my my agent at the time recruited good players, like ex players from academies and whatnot. And they came, obviously, try playing the FA Youth Cup and get back into the professional game and whatnot. Mm. So that happened. We played. We go into the first round, second round, fourth round, no, third round. And then in the fourth round, we had um, Leighton Orient. Mm. But obviously, all this game that we played, so the first, second, third, I've scored, I've scored in every single game, like going into Leighton Orient. And I remember we played late in Orion. We lost, I think, I can't remember. We got battered, though. We got battered at late in Orion. But there was a lot of clubs watching that game. Okay. Yeah, so I had Norwich, West Ham. Who else was there? Charlton. Um, who else was there? Aston Villa. There was a South End. South End was there as well. Cambridge. So all these clubs, this is this is how funny it is. So all, like I've had all these clubs, so like South End, Cambridge, MK Dons was there as well. Mm. All these clubs that I've been to, I remember they've all called my agent after that late in the game. Ask for you, ask for you back. Yeah, like they called me after that late in the game. And I remember West Ham called as well, Charlton called, and Norwich. So I had a few clubs calling calling my agent's phone after the after that game. And I remember, I was, so I'm sitting there thinking, Southend, no. Cambridge, no. Mm. MK does, no. Southend, no. Because I've already been there. They've, they've seen me play. Mm. And I thought, okay, cool, I'm going West Ham. Because West Ham was close to home. I was from East I'm from East Ham, isn't it? Okay, okay. In, in East London. So I thought, yes, like West Ham all day. Yeah. And then I went West Ham. I was at West Ham for nearly a year. And then this is what happened. But when I went with Stan, so you, I was so playing. Were you, you just playing for them? You didn't sign for them? I didn't even, I didn't get to sign for them. Okay. You just, I didn't get to sign for them. 
it's weird they they wanted to sign me, but that's that's what I'm gonna get to. So yeah. I went West Ham. They were paying me. Okay. When I was there, they were paying me at West Ham. I was there for literally like eleven months, going into a year, a season. I was basically there for a whole season. Mm. I went how there. You, how would you? How would you know? How would you know when you there? Just to how was I when I went yeah. to West Ham? I was so I was sixteen. Okay. Yeah. I was sixteen, turning seventeen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 16, 10, 17. So I was, I was at West Ham and then they were paying me and whatnot. But I remember it got to like six months in. And then remember how I said I needed the clearance to play? Yeah. That happened again at West Ham. All right. Yeah, that happened again at West Ham. But luckily it happened at West Ham because obviously West Ham's a big club. Yeah. Okay. So it happened at West Ham. I couldn't, I couldn't play games mm. after six months. So basically, the end when I left, uh, left West Ham. Yeah. So I left West Ham because I couldn't play games. And I remember they tried to do it. Like they tried to sort out my papers and whatnot. But the only way you could do this if, is if my dad was here. Oh, okay. I'm yeah, my, my. And my dad wasn't in the country, so it was just me, my mom, my sisters, and my older brothers. Mm. So I remember getting on the phone to my dad now, and, and I'm angry. I'm thinking, bro, like, you're not even here, but you're still messing up my pattern. Like, I'm thinking, like, what's going on? Yeah. So I called him, all like, like, you need to come back, like, you need to come back. Even if you come back for, like, six months, a year, and then you can leave again, it's calm, but you need to sort this thing out. And then I remember my dad, like, sorting out, he's, he's He's rattled on the phone, like he's, he's getting his things ready. And I remember him flying back. He's flew back now and whatnot. And then it was sorted, but at this time I already left, left West Ham. Oh, okay. Yeah, so West Ham said that like, like they, they couldn't really do much. Yeah, so they let me go. And I, and I thought, right, fair enough, because I've seen them. Like, at least that was the first club that's actually like, tried, tried, yeah. tried to help me. Sort of thing, so I've I've, I've, I've um, accepted it, and I thought cool. But when I left Ch- uh, when I left um, West Ham, I had uh, Norwich call me because they found out I left West Ham, and I had um, Charlton. Mm. So now I'm thinking, do I want to go to Norwich or should I just go like Charlton? It's clear that like, it's close to home. And I thought cool. I said no to Norwich, then I went into Charlton. I went into Charlton the next day and I was at Charlton for that three weeks. Then I got offered my first deal, my first ever pro pro, pro contract. I was I was like 17 by now. Yeah, I was buzzing. I was buzzing. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I this this the, the, after I played four games for them. Yeah. And on the fourth game, I played for the 23s. Cause I was a scholar back then. Yeah. And I started. And I was thinking, okay, cool, that this this is this is a shout, man. Played for the 23s. I played well. Like I played really well. Like, I was thinking, yeah, that that. Like, even you know when you play so well, like deep down you think that like, come on, man, like, I played well. Yeah, and I was seeing I was seeing when um when we go in contest and I was looking at looking you up and I was I was I was thinking, wait, is this is his age right? Because I'm mean, thinking he said he's 18, he's playing 23. I was like, wait, let me just double check. I was like, oh he is he's, he's doing quite well. And it was a bit involved because before the phone call we went to a little debrief and I just wanted to confirm what club you was at. We'll move on to that. Because I was like, it didn't really make sense to me because I was thinking if he's under eight, he's an he's an 18 playing 23, like is he on loan or did he like I said we dove into that? So it's Quite interesting. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, so I played, I remember after the game, after the game, the head of recruitment, Steve Avery, called me into his office and he was like, like well done. I thought he played well, whatnot. He said, keep it going. And then good things will happen. But then after we had that conversation, the very next day, he came back to me, he said, look, we'll offer you a contract. And I thought, okay, cool. But this was funny that like, he said, we'll offer you a contract. Do you know how long they offered me? How long? Three months. Three months professional contract? Three months pro contract. Like, I remember when I heard it and I was thinking, wait, you know, like you're mocking me. Like how you, this time everyone else has got like one year's, yeah. one year and an option. They've never, they've not given out more than one year. I think two guys got pros, yeah. two or three. Brendan, 
at, at the championship level, your your contracts are going to be no longer than two years. So yeah, so I'm thinking, what the hell is going? On? No, man, I'm thinking, no, nah, man, these lot, they've got it wrong or something. But I thought, cool. Let me. I, I remember I called my agent, and I was like, look, they're, they're offering me. They offered me mm. they, this. I don't even think it's an offer, but I felt like they're just extending my trial period where they'll pay me. Mm. That's how it felt like. So I called my agent. And I was like, look, they offered me, but they offered me three months. Like, what do we do? He said, look, like you're getting older. Like, take it. And I said, cool. And I took it. I remember first game, who did we play? I can't remember what team we played. It might have been Coventry, but I played. I probably had the best game of my life. I guess Coventry that I played. Because obviously I knew I had a point to prove in it. So I'm playing, I'm playing hard. I'm doing, doing my I'm doing a shift. A week into that three months, they offered me a three-year deal. Yeah. And at this time, no one, no one ever, no one, no one's had a three year deal contract. Yeah, Everyone's on ones, ones and options and whatnot. Yeah. So I remember after the game, it was, um, after the game, he called me into his office. He was like, look, scrap that, like, scrap that contract. I'm here offering you a new deal. And I'm like, okay. So I said, I said, uh, what's the offer? He had it on the table. So when I came in, he had the offer there and he said, this is what we're offering. Mm-hmm. And then he said, we've never offered anyone a free year deal. So you feel, you should feel privileged or so- something like that. Mm. And I remember looking at him, then I just started smiling. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> just started smiling. Now I'm smiling. He was like, yeah, no, you should be happy. You've done really well. I was like, yeah, thank you. And I remember taking the copy of it. I took it home. I showed it to my mom. Then I FaceTimed my agent. Everyone's buzzing. Mm. It's like, yeah, finally. Sort of thing. Like all that graph. And I remember being Bro, getting told man, two years. Go, but you've got no, you got more than a normal contract. You got, like you said, you got more than what they, they normally dish out. So essentially, what's so what's yeah. what's the story of what's the story of that then? Yeah, so after that, but looking back at it, that is probably the biggest regret that I've done. Okay. Yeah, because at Charlton, yeah. So you, so you didn't sign it? I signed it. Oh, you signed, signed it. it, yeah? Yeah, I signed, I signed the thing. The thing. Like, I just turned 21. Oh, so you, so, so, so you, you signed it when you, saw age, you signed it when you were 18? I signed it when I was 18. Okay. Um, so what So what happens? You say it's one of the worst mistakes you've ever done. So what happens? Now, don't, don't, get, don't get me wrong. It gave me the platform to yeah. get into the professional world like, fully, like, properly. Mm. So that... Like, I'm obviously like people know me as the player that plays for Charlton. Mm. But at Charlton, yeah, obviously we had Lee Bolly as the gaffer at the time. Oh, yeah. And whatnot. And then, um, you know, everyone says this, this, that. And um, I was playing 23's first season that I played. <laughs> Sorry, hold on. Hold on. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so I played 23's first season and then I done all right done all right I'm fairly good because I was in my first like, season at academy level like, like properly playing mm-hmm. and then second season I was getting better and whatnot but going towards my second season that thing happened again in terms of where I couldn't play oh okay so it cropped up yeah. again. It popped up again because obviously my dad came. Yeah. I was playing. Then when he left, it came that they flagged it in the in the thing or something like that. Because I needed them, I needed to sort out my, my papers, my visa and stuff yeah. and whatnot. So I'm thinking, oh my dude, like this is actually gonna like be the end of me or something. Like, because now I'm playing pro, I can't be having time off. Yeah. Like, I can't be having time off where I don't play. But this time it was even longer because I couldn't play for like eight months. Yeah, for like eight, that seven, eight months. And I remember it got to a point where I felt like I was getting depressed. Like I'll come in every day, I'll train, I'll train with the with the team and whatnot. But every week, I'll, I'll like just stay at home and watch them play. Or 
I'll get into like under 17s games and play like friendlies, like in schools and that. And, I've, and I used to sit there and think, bro, that I must be cursed or something. Did you get any help? Did you get any help with your mental health from your agent, your club? Did you no. express your feelings to anyone, like apart from your family, or was it would you just feel like it was just too much and you just it was back just then, back, back then it felt like it was too much. Wait, hop, wait, bro, man. Sorry. Hmm. Sorry, man, my agent keeps trying to call me. Yeah, that's right. yeah, so back then it felt it felt too much like. It's one of them was I want to talk about it, but I don't because I, I, it's happened so many times here yeah, where it's happened before and I'm thinking, but this time it was just, I was like, nah. I remember I used to, after training, I'll be the first one out. I'll be the first one out to go home. Mm. And, I'll, and I'll sit at home, do nothing. I was at Diggs at the time. And I remember speaking to my Diggs lady, I was like, nah, what's good? I was like, so what do you think Chunk would do? Because at this point I thought, I'm going, they're going to end up terminating my contract or something because I'm not used to them if I'm not playing. And whatnot. So I'm sitting there. I thought I was getting released. This, this, that. I remember going in one morning and I, was, I asked my um, academy manager, the head of recruitment, if I could see. And I went up, I spoke to him. I was like, listen, if it means you lot don't have to pay me, then that's fine. I'll play. I, I don't need to get paid. That's what I said to him. I said, Look, I don't need to, I just need to like be in the system and keep like keep going, keep training. Like, I need this training. I don't want to leave the club and I've got back to you training. weren't allowed to train or play. I was allowed to train, yeah. Okay. But that's all I could do. But I was like, Tim, yeah, like, I'd rather keep training yeah. at a good level than obviously go back and train at like Horn Church and whatnot. Mm. I remember speaking to him about that. And he was, he was, he was he's been quite nice. And then he said, no, nah, like, don't worry about it. These are the things you can't control mm. and whatnot. And I remember the club was, the club, to be fair, like, they tried, they tried to help, like, they were patient. Mm. They're really patient. And um, like, they've, they've supported me when I, when, they, when I needed the support. And I remember speaking to one of my um, coaches, Hamza, and I, I spoke to him, that I sort of just started breaking down to him, like, I broke down and I was like, he could see because I used to come training my head down, I'll come, I'll come late and then I'll just leave first. Like, it was all going wrong for me at one point. And then I spoke to him, he, he sort of just lifted me up a little bit. He told me, look, you can't control the uncontrollable. These are the things that happen because he's been through it himself. So and he said, look, don't worry. So after you went through the situation now with your contract and right now and you're in a bit of your yeah. left and right. So um so you said your contract's not up, right? Um your contract right now. Is it this summer? Yeah, my contract. So that got off after my the end of my three years, I got offered another year. Yeah. In, so that would have made me a fourth year pro. Yeah. Yeah, Charlton. But I said no, because yeah. by then I was I, I was 20. Yeah. I was 20, and I was like, Tim, like, I literally just, so I just turned 21 in April. And I remember I told, I told Charles, look, like, I appreciate the offer, but they had no plans for me. Mm. Like, they had no was plans that, for was me. That, was that based on the fact that your situation still hasn't been sorted? No, nah, like, nah, my situation now is done. It's done. So it's what, done. So it was done for the last season. So, 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 Charlton, so Charlton sorted that all out. So it wasn't challenge. It was it wasn't challenge. That the club couldn't do it. I remember there there was a solicitor. We had to hire a solicitor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That that's obviously like specialising. He was Brazilian, mm. and um, he's the one that saw it out for us. Like he done it for me. So after so after you done that now, and obviously Charlton know that you're an eligible player now. You can play and do whatnot. When they offered you the contract, what why why why, why did you feel like you needed to turn it down? Because um, the season before that, this this papers have been done for over a season now, like over a year. Oh, so, so, you, so you was at Charlton while it was sorted? Yeah, yeah. while, it was, while it, was, it was done. Yeah. And then I went to New my third season with Charlton, like fresh, just played. Hmm. Played every single game. Came top goal scorer, hmm. top assist. Like, and I remember th during that season, 
mm. I'll be having a good game. Mm. But Charlton never seemed to like take notice. Because mm. I remember before that game, before the season, they were like, I need you to do this. I need you to, to do that. Mm. That affect the game more. I become top goal scorer, top assist. And I'm dribbling, I'm playing good games, but they didn't take notice of it. And I remember I speaking to my manager, I was like, it's like everything I do, it's like everything I do, I need to do, that. It's, it's not, that no one's taking notice of it. And he was like, he was like, but that's not the case. I was like, well, you look at the play, you look at players like Albie Morgan, all them players, like what have they done in the 23s? And they're in the first team. Mm. And me, I'm actually like knocking and banging on doors and doing stuff, but no team. Yeah. I've not even gone out on loan. I remember asking them to get me out on loan. They said, yeah, we'll look into that, look into that. But I remember a few like conference teams, like National League teams, have come in, Dartford, uh, Kingstonian, Kingstonian, I think. Some other teams, man, they, they just didn't do nothing for me. So now, and I was. Just, so, so now you decided you didn't take out that contract. So you would have been a, a free agent at that time. Then I take it. And yeah. So what, 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 what team are you currently playing for now? Right now, I'm, I'm in Ireland for six months. Yeah. So in, you're in Ireland yeah. for six months. And who's it you're playing for? Sorry. Who's it you're playing for? Waterford, Waterford Football Club. Waterford Football Club. Um, how did you get that deal? How did that come about? What made you wanted to get off to Ireland? I'm pretty sure you maybe had other different offers, options. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. There's, there's well, the reason I remember, I remember before I left Charlton, I was on the phone to Colchester, mm. Colchester um, United, and then um, they wanted me to go in and play as a right winger for the first team. Mm. But last season, they went through a drought where they were nearly relegated mm. and whatnot. So now they've turned their attention. They said, we want more experienced players mm. that's going to keep us in the league. Mm. But again, I already told Chow and I'm leaving. Mm. I don't, I do, thanks for the offer, but I don't want to. I don't want to mm. do it no more. So I've left Chow and I remember we was on the phone to coaches. They was that. So what's happening? Like am I coming in or whatnot? And they was moving a bit funny. And I was like, what's going on? They were like, oh no, that like, like we we like Junior, but we don't. We like we don't want to get relegated. Really we feel like he's too young. Like obviously, I had no first team experience mm. as well. So I would have been going fresh and then I had to learn and adapt. Mm. So they wanted more experienced players and I said, okay, cool. And then I had um, Portsmouth on the phone. I had um, girls. What led you to your decision that you are now? That you decided to go play for, um, what, is it Watford? Watford. Yeah. Because, so, so obviously I don't want to speak to you because then I'll be, like, I'll be um, sort of, Compromising your position. Yeah, like sort of like because um, there's there's plans that the reason why I'm here is a, it's a plan that like, it's a step. So basically, like, so that's what I want to get to answer. So basically, right now the club that you are at, you basically have a situation that you can't really talk about where let's yeah. just say you're being monitored, and let's just say if you yeah, yeah, well, yeah. if you do well in this period, then there's potentially a, a contract for you. At no, like that this this this. There's a there's an offer that there's an offer that before I come here I had two offers. Yeah. I had two offers. One good that like, good club in in Portugal. Mm. I'm talking about that, that one of the big clubs. You don't have to. And mention, then I, you don't have to mention any names. Just yeah, no, but it's that like, the club is. Yeah. If I said if I said the name, you will know exactly what club I'm talking about. I can have a, I have a I haven't had a rough idea. Yeah, because and the top um, Portuguese club we all. Kind of know who the yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 and obviously there's a there's another club here I've had to be fair but there was a lot of clubs abroad mm. and had I think two two here what two two in the champ as well two of them are in the champ so yeah you, and I, hey go on sorry Carol and obviously and I remember I still speak to my agent I was like look so if I go to these clubs am I gonna play or am I gonna they're gonna make me do this I'll go and play 23s for a bit, then go out on loan and then try work. Mm. And then I remember the chairman of Waterford called me mm. and he said, listen, like he knew the clubs as well. I don't know how, but he knew because he started talking to me about them. And he said, look, if you go here, like the, the chance of you playing is very, like very slim. I'm not saying you can't do it, but it's very like slim. Mm. 
because these are chunk team and then they'll send you out on loan and on loan. And you don't know if you're going to get a good loan because loan can go two ways. You can go on loan and not play and you're stuck there for a bit. And then, or you can go and do well. But then he said, but if you come here, you're guaranteed that your spot is guaranteed because he's recruiting players. He said, I won't recruit no one in your position. You're, the, you're going to come and play to, to whatever, Christmas. And what position season. for the mid? Yeah, midfield, like 10. Okay, 10. 10 and inverted winger. So, because I like, I'm left footed. I like to come in um, yeah, and shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so he said inverted winger or 10. And I said, cool. And he was offering me a decent contract. Like this. A contract's not bad. Like this. A lot, I, know, I know a lot of people are like, yeah, why did you go island? But. No, no, really it's, good it's good. You know, it's good to hear from that because um, we had um, Gabriel Gabriel into before, and he he he's he's not gone to a similar route down with you. That been in and out of clubs. He he hasn't. He never got signed. But his situation is that he decided, you know, I'm gonna take the route and go play men's football. And he's currently at Villa Ricky doing his bits and bobs, and and he's yeah. trying to push on from there at the young age. Um, he's currently 18 right now. So I know especially the young boys growing up being in the system and maybe not getting an understanding that maybe you sometimes you've got to make that more decision like am I going to go to a lower league play men's football am I going to go abroad so it's good that you had that mindset because there's a lot of kids that are young players that will just be like if I'm not getting to academy like I'm not if I'm not playing for an English team like I'm not going nowhere and then that could halt their development halt their choices and able could 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 stop them so we spoke a bit about your career and currently where you are, are, are right now. So you've been playing for for a season. It's, it's your first season. You, or you, show, you had. I literally, I come, I literally come here 19 days ago. Oh, you've been there for 19 days. So you're so you're preparing yourself for your first well, half of the season. season. No, no, but the, their season works different here. They already played. But their season ends in Christmas. Oh, oh. So well, in the in the in the giant so in the process of the season, so your 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 season still playing. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Now it makes it makes a lot of sense. Now it makes a lot of sense. So, um, so we just want to delve on a bit more. Just talk about more about your academy situations. So, just just general being in the situation that you've been through and anything that you've gone through. What would you say? Um, what advice would you give to anyone that's like in the academy system? And maybe stuff they should look out for, or stuff that they feel that they should. Just, just something yeah. maybe from your experience. This is this is something, yeah. This is something that stood by me. You see, when you're a good player, yeah. Football will always find good players. Like no matter what happens, no matter what obstacle you've come across, the ups and downs. As long as your your head is straight mm. and your mind is clear, you know what you want, and you're working hard. It's there's no impossible. That it's not impossible that like you would you would play football. So to all the young kids, because I know it could be that like mentally draining, mm. like you're training every day, but you're not getting anything out of it at that time. Mm. But it's that time that counts for the for the future. It's all it's all them little things you're doing that's gonna affect you in the long run. So that's why I always I remember this I was speaking to Manny and he said to me, This is like, this is what he said to me. He said, obviously. If you work hard mm. and you do the right things, no matter what happens, that like you can't turn around and say, oh, I should have did this, because you don't have regrets. What player do you see, do you mould yourself like? What player have you looked up to? What player do you see yourself like? And after that, where do you see yourself playing? Where do you see yourself, what, what goal? What do you, do you see yourself playing for guinea Bissau? Do you see yourself playing for England? Just give a rough idea of what you see yourself maybe in the next five years. Oh, your okay. player. What player do you see yourself like? Mold like? Who did you grow up? What you want to be? It was all, I, I looked up to Lionel Messi. Yeah. Like, but, but he's an incredible player. Mm. And the, the reason I remember when I first watched Messi, he's always left footed, mm. and I try and copy everything he does. But now that I've grown up, I, I'm trying to think who who I think I play like. Oh, I don't really look at any. Firstly, I don't like watching football. I, I hate watching football, so I don't. Ooh. I don't learn from. It. You don't I have hate. a team. You don't support a team. Though. I support Arsenal, but I don't watch it. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Well, I can understand why now. You don't watch football. Yeah, yeah. So, 
Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know who I but I don't know. I feel like I'm just unique. Like, you play like me. Okay, okay. Man, that's, that's really good. That's, in, that's, that's interesting that you say that because when I do speak to a lot of upcoming players, they always be like, oh, yeah, I, I have a look up to Ronaldo or Messi. And I'll be like, well, so do you see yourself now like playing like that? No, I don't play that no one. Like, I'm me, like. You know what I'm saying? But I know how yeah. it is because you want in two, three years to kids to be like, yeah, I want to play like him. So I understand yeah, yeah, that yeah. mentality and it's it's a good mentality to have because also you want to be your own person and you want you want yeah. now you're in that field, you want to be known as that guy. So now, now it's really interesting. That's it's really and it's really um, good to hear that. So where would you see yourself? Like obviously you don't have to talk too much about your situation, what you're going through now, but where would you see yourself in five years? What's your aspiration? And like I said, it's interesting as well. Do you would you would you see yourself play for Guinea Bissau or are you in a market to play for England? And how do you see how how would you see that working out? Or, or is there potentially any other nationalities that you could play for? I could play I could play for Guinea Bissau because I was speaking to Guinea Bissau not long ago as well, but they're like football stuff, it's a bit unorganized. Okay. So it's a bit unorganized, but I think it's getting better now. But I do see myself playing for Guinea Bissau, not England. Because I'm not English and I don't have an English passport, so I can't play for England. Yeah, but no, considering because you've been here since what? You've been here since how? Since I was eight. Yeah, eight. And I know it is in England if you reside here for more than five years and you do get your passport, then you would be able to. Um, you would be able to mm-hmm. play for England. So in your current situation, you you considering you, say, you know I wouldn't even want to play for England. You know, I'll be real with you. Like, that, was even, that was that was that based on your experience of the Euros? Or was not that- even that. I just I'm, I, I wouldn't play for if I could play for my uh, for a country, it would be good. So mm. now that's and that's really good because you've got players like Raheem Sterling, who was born in Jamaica, came to England at a very young age, and obviously he can he has he could have played for Jamaica if he went to his home of birth and mm. gone on to play for England. So it's really interesting to hear you're saying that and your point of view, and I, I'm proud to hear that you you, you, you want to play for your country of origin and. And you can take blessing from that, and I feel um, that's a very, very, very good decision that you you decided to make in your career. So that's that's good. And so we'll say, where where, where do you see yourself? If, where do you see yourself five, ten years? Where do you think you could play? What what would you be open and happy to do in your career? That do you so do, would you be happy to play abroad for a long period of time? Do you see yourself? Do you see? Do you no, see no, yourself? No. Do you see yourself? Do you see yourself going here, then everywhere, or do you, do you want to be a Premier League player? I want to be in five years time. I want to be playing in the prem. Like, I want to be playing in the Premier League, mm. and um, then what I love because I, I, I think I can. I, I believe I can play in the prem. Mm. It's just uh, I believe I can play men's football. I just need the opportunity, and then obviously I can, I'm getting better as a player. I'm learning. Mm. Obviously, then then I do see myself in five years time playing at the highest level that I can play at. It's an international level Champions League, yeah. So say by twenty five, you should be. I should be seeing you in Champions League games. In five years' time, I'll be twenty six. You're going to see me. You're going to see me playing in the Champions League. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're going to see me playing it for my country. I'm going to be playing in the prep, playing in the champ. Everything, bro. Trust me. No, I like. I like. The, I like that your the determination. So, what's your goals? What's your goals for? I see the season. We're halfway through. Did you go, you go to uh, how many goals assists you got so far? I played two games. I got I got goal. You got a goal. I got a so I got a game. how many I games? Got you got, how many games you got left for the end of the season? I got fourteen. Got fourteen. What do you see yourself? I'll get. I'll get. I'll get ten goals. You get ten goals. Yeah. Is that is that is that minimum requirement? Ten goals. Yeah. That's minimum requirement. I need ten goals. So I hold you to that. What we do is December when the season's ended. We see <laughs> Ali. You see it has gone. And uh, we'll definitely we'll definitely interact and we'll keep in touch, man. Um, it's been a pleasure. It's been an absolute pleasure having you down on this interview. I know you've got a game. I know you've got a game today, and your agent's ringing you down. So um, I won't keep you too long. It's been a pleasure that you've managed to finally come on, considering the fact that we've been chasing you down from left, right, and centre. And um, yeah, I know you spoke a bit about um, this bit about advice. But before we end the show, is there any just one? Is there one particular thing or? One some, something that you say not every player would know or doesn't know at this current moment, especially a young player going through this experience. Is there one thing that you say it could be in terms of like decision that you've made 
like going um, to a different country or um, how you dealt with the situation it, when you were younger. If there's one specific thing that you think that that's that, that stood you out and kept you going, what would it be? I think like don't be scared to make the call. Because what happens is I feel like a lot of young players are too scared to obviously like take risks. Mm. Especially when you're in your 18s, 19s, and you have to make that make a decision and go with it. I feel like once you make a decision, go with it. Believe in yourself, man. Like I said, football finds good players. If you believe that you're good and you do the right things, then you should be alright, man. No, man. Great, man. Great for that. It's been a pleasure, man. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Um, guys, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Is there anything, any, any, anything that you want to ask in the comments? Share that in the comments and we'll, we'll, we'll make sure I, I maybe can get back to you on that. And um, it's been a pleasure, man. Thank you for having us on the show. And don't forget as well, our show is sponsored by Self Made Savage. 20% discount on below. Don't forget to hit us up. And yeah, guys, man, we'll see you again next time. We've got more interviews in that coming soon. And oh, yeah, one thing we'd like to ask everyone before we leave, is there one player, apart from yourself, that you feel that we should look out for, maybe we get down for an interview, someone that you feel that's going to have a big career that maybe no one don't know about right now. Say his name and what club he plays for, and then we'll have a we'll have a little look at him, man. and the audience will have a little look at him as well. All right. Did you, did you, hear, did you hear what I said? No, what the audience are going to have a look at him as well. No, no, I said, is there any player that you feel that that you feel is out there that you feel that's going to have a big career apart from yourself that we maybe haven't spoke about or brought up or we obviously haven't spoken about anyone apart from yourself but is there anyone that you feel that's under under the radar that's doing bits that you feel that's going to have a big massive career? Yeah, yeah. Shout out Ibi. Ibi, yeah? Abraham. Abraham. That, that guy, that guy is Lionel Messi, black Lionel Messi. Remember, I'm saying it from now. What's, what team does he play for? And what's his full name? He's at Rochdale. He's at his name is Abraham Odo. Abraham Odo is that is that he's, he's in a Rochdale first teamer? First team player, bro. First big, team player. Big player. So look out look out for look out for um Adumu at Rochdale and big things coming from your from your mate here. So we'll look out for you. And yeah, man, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for coming down. Enjoy your game today. Hope you get a hat trick. Hope you do your thing, man. Hope you smash it. Have a good, yeah. have a good end to the season. I hope the situation that you've got currently right now hope it works out for you and we'll definitely stay in touch hopefully get you one in the show let it run down the line see how you've gone throughout your season how your career how it's going um but most definitely man it's been a pleasure having you on the show man thanks again cheers bro thanks for having me man see you later man cheers Take care. <laughs>